Hi, and welcome to the video for section 2.3 for Math 181. This is uh, the only video for this section, as you can see from the timestamp. It's a pretty quick video as well, in large part because we've sort of already addressed what this section is about. So the official title of this section is Basic Differentiation Formulas. <clears throat> so what this is doing, if you remember a few videos ago, I showed you guys a shortcut of how to uh, take derivatives of polynomials. Within this section, actually pages 95 through 100, so five pages worth, it actually goes through every step of if we have a constant and we take a derivative, why is it zero? If we have 3x and we take the derivative, why is it just equal to 3? So it goes through all the progressions, uh, no matter what the degree of the polynomial is, showing us how uh, we're able to just sort of use that shortcut that I showed you in the past. So I'm not going to go through all of that. If you want to see the proofs and the derivation and why does it work, again, page 95 through 100 should get you there. But instead, I want to focus on two other functions within this chapter or within this section, which is the sine and cosine functions. So, think back to when we first started talking about derivatives. What are derivatives? Well, they're the slope of the tangent line, right? So let's first look at the sine function. So let's say that we have y equals sine of x. So if we were to sketch that function, it looks like what? It looks Something like that goes to negative infinity, goes to positive infinity. We have 0, we have pi over 2, we have pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Keeps going, right? <clears throat> now, let's draw another graph underneath of it. And let's start plotting slope of tangent lines and where they end up. So when we're at 0, our tangent line is what? It is a 45 degree line going up and to the right. So up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. So that means what? That means our slope at zero at the tangent line y equals sine of x is equal to one. How about at pi over two? Well, if I draw a tangent line to the graph at pi over two, it's what? It's a horizontal line which is, has slope, what, zero, so down here. How about at pi? Well, now we have a 45 degree line headed downward, so that's minus one. At three pi over two, again, we have a horizontal line, and, oops, sorry, two pi is over here. So sine function keeps going, it ends here at two pi. <coughs> So at, so at th uh, 3 pi over 2, our slope is 0. And at 2 pi, again, we're back to this 45 degree line. And this will just keep happening, right? 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, the whole way. And it just keeps repeating. And so if I connect these dots with a curve, what do I get? Hopefully that jumps off the page. It's just saying, oh, that's my cosine curve, right? So what that means then <coughs> is if our function f of x is equal to sine of x, then the derivative of that function, the derivative of sine x, the slope of these tangent lines creates the cosine curve. So therefore, if f of x is sine of x, the derivative of sine of x is just cosine of x. And we could do the same thing for the cosine curve. If we 
plot our points here, what are we going to have? 0, negative 1, 0, positive 1, 0, the whole way. And if you plot them, what you're going to get is with a sine curve, but it's upside down. We're going to come down and then go back up and come down and go back up. So similarly, if we were to plot it out, find these tangent lines, if f of x is equal to cosine of x, then f prime of x, so the derivative of cosine is equal to minus sine of x. So it's a sine curve, but it's reflected on the x-axis, therefore it gets a negative sign in front. So these are the two extra formulas that you're going to need that's the important thing really from this video. Let's look at a quick example <clears throat> that will wrap up this video. As I sort of alluded to it, it's a quick one. So let's say we have the example we want to differentiate, i.e. we want to take the derivative the following function. y is equal to 3 sine of theta plus 4 cosine of theta. So in this case, we're finding the derivative of y with respect to what? With respect to theta. So that means our dy, in this case, d theta. So if we were taking the derivative with respect to x, this would be an x in the denominator. I just want to use some of this different notation uh, that we were introduced to in section 2.2, I believe. <clears throat> so the derivative of this function y with respect to theta is what? Well, when we have 3 sine of theta, it's like taking the derivative of 3x. So we have the number in front, the constant, and then whatever the derivative of the piece is afterwards. So we have 3, and our derivative of sine is what? It's equal to cosine. So this would be cosine theta, and then plus 4 times the derivative of cosine. So the derivative of cosine is what? Minus sine of theta. So if I simplify this, this is 3 cosine of theta plus minus means I have minus 4 sine of theta. And that's it. So same sort of methodology in finding the derivative of this function. Um, we just take the derivative of the individual trig pieces and then simplify it. So that's it. That's the one and only video for section 2.3. Come on back. We'll look at the product rule, sort of recall the quotient rule, section 2.4. And then I'll give you guys a bunch of examples starting to apply a lot of these different shortcuts and techniques.